Welcome to the Everyday Journal Club. I'm Hope, a biologist with 15 years of research experience, now fortunate to be working in a Nobel Prize winning lab. This channel has three main goals. One, to help you stay effortlessly updated on the latest scientific breakthroughs. No paywalls, no jargon overload. Two, to build a supportive community where we can exchange the most valuable experience-based research advice. Three, to share valuable strategies and concrete examples on how to achieve meaningful scientific breakthroughs. Once we reach 1,000 subscribers, I'll begin releasing content focused on the third goal. Let's go. Let's make great science together. Welcome to the deep dive. OK, today we're hitting a really surprising angle on Alzheimer's. What if vulnerability isn't just about the usual suspects, but maybe a lack of a basic trace metal? Yeah, specifically endogenous lithium, the lithium that's naturally supposed to be in your brain derived from your diet. And the really counterintuitive part, the sources we're looking at show it's depleted, like really early on, even before full Alzheimer's in mild cognitive impairment. Exactly. We usually think of lithium as this high-dose drug for bipolar disorder. Yeah, right? right. But this is about tiny amounts, naturally present, acting as maybe a crucial resilience factor. So our mission today is to unpack that. How does this natural lithium protect the brain? Why does it disappear? And uh, what are researchers doing about it? Okay, so the background. 80 research for decades has been laser focused on amyloid beta plaques and tell tangles. Those proteins. Your classic villains, yeah. But that doesn't fully explain why some people get the disease and others, well, seem resilient, even with some plaque load. This study looks at lithium as a potential key to that resilience. And we knew lithium had some role, didn't we? Linked to brain health pathways. You did, especially involving a kinase called GSK3. GSK3 is uh, kind of infamous in Alzheimer's research. Because it modifies tau protein, makes it toxic. Precisely. It hyperphosphorylates tau, leading to those tangles. And lithium is known to inhibit GSK3. Ecological studies even hinted maybe areas with more lithium in the water had lower dementia rates. Ah, OK. But correlation isn't causation, right? Exactly. So the hypothesis here was much more direct. Is the brain's own regulated lithium actively protective? And is its loss an early event that actually kicks off the damage linking aging to AD? OK, so how did they test that? Let's talk about the first big piece of evidence, the human data. Right. They use something called metallomic profiling, basically a detailed survey of all the metals in postmortem brain tissue, specifically the prefrontal cortex from people who had mild cognitive impairment, or MCI. And what jumped out? The specificity. They look at zinc, copper, iron, whole panel. But lithium was the only trace metal significantly lower in the MCI group compared to controls. Only lithium. That's, uh, wow. That suggests something very specific is going wrong with lithium regulation, even before full dementia. It does, and it gets more complex. The study suggests the disease process itself makes the lithium problem worse. How so? You mean the amyloid plaques? Yeah. The plaques apparently act like lithium sponges. They physically bind to it, sequester it, trap it. So as plaques build up... They essentially suck the available lithium out of circulation in the brain tissue. Creating a feedback loop. Less free lithium means less control over that GSK3 enzyme. Exactly, which means more tau phosphorylation, more tangles, more inflammation. The whole cascade speeds up because the natural break lithium is being removed by the pathology itself. Okay, that connects the dots in a really compelling way. Yeah. So they had this human correlation and a mechanism. How did they prove causation? I assume mouse models came next. They did. They used standard AD mouse models like the 3XTG and G20 lines, which huh. develop plaques and tangles. And they messed with their lithium levels. Yeah. Yep. They put some mice on a lithium deficient diet. It lowered the lithium in their cortex by about half. And the results. It was dramatic. Everything got worse, faster, accelerated plaque buildup, much more phosphorylated tau, way more neuroinflammation. You could see the microlia getting activated. And cognition, memory. Significant memory loss in the lithium-depleted mice. <laughs> Clear behavioral impact. So it wasn't just about the plaques and tangles themselves. The lack of lithium caused broader problems. Absolutely. They looked at gene expression, the transcriptome, across different brain cells, neurons, oligodendrocytes, which make myelin, microglia, mm. widespread changes mirroring human AD, loss of synapses, the connections between neurons, damage to axons, the nerve fibers, even loss of myelin, the insulation around axons. Basically, the brain circuitry started breaking down. And this all ties back to that GSK3 enzyme being uncontrolled. That seems to be a major hub. The overactivation of GSK3 due to the lack of lithium inhibition appears to drive a lot of this downstream damage. This is fascinating. Okay, so if lithium is crucial, 
but amyloid traps it. What's the therapeutic angle? You can't just pump in standard lithium. Right? It's the challenge. Standard clinical lithium, lithium carbonate, uh, it binds pretty strongly to amyloid plaques itself. So high doses might just get trapped or cause toxicity elsewhere. So the innovation was well, using a different form, hmm. lithium orotate or LEO. It's a salt formulation that seems to have much lower binding affinity for plaques. Like a stealth version? Kind of, yeah. Designed to bypass that plaque sequestration problem and actually get free lithium levels up inside the brain tissue where it's needed. And did it work in the mice? Amazingly well. Oh. Low-dose LEO treatment didn't just prevent the AD pathology from developing in the models. It reversed it. It actually reversed existing pathology. Reduced plaques, reduced phosphatau, calmed the neuroinflammation, and importantly, restored memory function. Wow. Reversal is the holy grail. And this was at low doses, avoiding the usual toxicity issues. Exactly. No evidence of the kind of toxicity you worry about with high-dose lithium carbonate. So this really shifts the perspective, doesn't it? It's not just about getting rid of toxic proteins. It's also potentially about restoring a crucial micronutrient, this endogenous lithium, that helps the brain resist the damage in the first place. It's about bioavailability. Making sure the lithium that is there can actually do its job. It opens up a whole new preventative or therapeutic strategy. Definitely a complementary approach. Maybe we could even monitor brain lithium levels or GFK3 activity as biomarkers down the line. So let's bring this home. What does this all mean for you listening? Endogenous lithium seems to be a key factor in brain resilience. Its loss, potentially driven by early amyloid deposition, might be a critical step that really kicks off the neurodegenerative process. And the data showed that even in cognitively normal, older adults, higher natural lithium levels in the brain correlated with better cognitive scores and healthier synapses. Right. So here's the provocative thought. If natural lithium levels are tied to cognitive health even before disease, what kind of personalized nutritional approaches or maybe targeted low-dose supplements like Lido could we potentially explore years earlier? Could we bolster brain resilience long before MCI is even a concern, something to think about? 